Io Sky is one of the best women's wrestlers in the world today. She has become such a hot asset in the wrestling scene due to her remarkable wrestling skills and captivating charisma that has catapulted her to the top of the wrestling industry as she is a multi-time champion in WWE. She was also a top star in Japan where she wrestled under the ring name Io Shirai. There she was the face of Joshi Wrestling and was carrying Japanese women's wrestling on her back. However, things haven't always been so rosy for Io and things could have turned out very differently. In 2012, when she was coming back from Mexico into Japan, she was arrested with her then boyfriend at the time, Nosawa Rongai, for smuggling 75 grams of marijuana inside two paintings into Japan, which is a country that is notoriously strict on marijuana. Io was facing 7 years in prison for this offence, and a professional wrestling career would have been over as a result of it. But how did it all come to this? What's the true story behind Io Sky smuggling weed into Japan? Io Sky was born in Kanagawa, Japan in 1990, and growing up, she was a massive fan of Japanese professional wrestling along with her sister Mio, who was 2 years older than her. Growing up, one of Io's favourites was the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi. Io and her sister Mio were so in love with professional wrestling that they decided to start training to become professional wrestlers when Io was 16 and Mio was 18. Io made her debut in 2007 under the ring name Io Shirai along with her sister Mio Shirai as a tag team called the Shirai Sisters. Because of Io's young age, she could not wrestle full time as she was still in high school but once she graduated, she worked full time as a pro wrestler. The Shirai sisters wrestled for various independent promotions across the Japanese independent circuit and they cultivated a small fan base. Everything was taken to the next level though when the dynamic duo met Kana. Now known as Asuka in WWE and is a multi-time women's champion there. Asuka, Io and Mio then formed the stable Triple Tails in 2010 and this stable was wildly successful as they performed for several different promotions across Japan. The synergy between these three women were off the charts. All three of their names were steadily growing in Japan and even though they weren't household names in the industry yet, they were getting more and more clout in the Joshi wrestling scene as time went on. This resulted in Triple Tails self-producing two of their very own independent shows, which is a significant feat because they were able to put butts in seats proving that they were a draw. Triple Tails were getting more and more famous in Japan but sooner or later problems started to surface as success is often a double edged sword. Because Triple Tails was getting so big, Io got an offer from Nane Takahashi to sign for the new Joshi wrestling promotion that she had just co-founded, Stardom. On the surface, this doesn't seem to be a big deal but it was because Asuka, Io's Triple Tails stablemate, had some serious beef with Nane Takahashi with Asuka and Nane even getting into a legit fist fight years prior. So Io had a big decision to make. Join the new fresh company in stardom that had an unproven track record with the guarantee that she'll be the star of the promotion or stay in the faction Triple Tails with her blood sister Mio as well as Asuka who she had created such a close relationship with. It was a hard decision to make but Io ultimately chose to join stardom and announced that she was leaving Triple Tails to focus on her singles career. Asuka saw this as a backstabbing seeing that Io chose to join her real life arch nemesis's promotion. A promotion that Asuka herself was blackballed from. Asuka wasn't the only one who was angry at Io for leaving Triple Tails though as her sister Mio Shirai was upset too. She always thought that they were a team but Io left her to accomplish her own goals while leaving her in the dust. Asuka and Mio remained a team afterwards but it just wasn't the same without Io. So Asuka and Mio eventually split up. This meant that Io was on bad terms with Asuka and Mio but she had to go to stardom and that she did, making her debut on the promotion's first few shows. From her first days in stardom, it was clear that she was going to be a big time player for them in the future. Io was getting more and more spotlight on her name and because of that, she started to wrestle in Mexico. In Mexico, she wrestled for various promotions, most notably Triple A. She wrestled under a cat mask in the beginning but she eventually took the mask off and wrestled as herself. On her various tours to wrestle in Mexico, she often worked with her then boyfriend at the time, Nosawa Rongai, who is 14 years older than her. Nosawa was a reputable figure in the Japanese wrestling scene, having wrestled in many promotions and even wrestled a few times for the American promotion TNA. But behind the scenes, Nosawa was quite the troublemaker as he was rumored to be tied to the Yakuza which is the Japanese mafia. This is very very frowned upon within Japan. Io's relationship with Nosawa further worsened her relationship with her sister Mio and also made the relationship with the rest of her family sour. Her family cut contact with her as they did not understand why she was running around with a wrestler who was a part time gangster. Despite this, Io continued dating him and continued to wrestle in Mexico while traveling with Nosawa constantly. Io and Nosawa traveled to Mexico in 2012 to wrestle for a show and attend an expo. 
At this expo, a fan gave the two wrestlers two big portraits of themselves. Io and Nosawa thought nothing of this as they just assumed it was a fan doing something nice for them, but there was nothing nice about what was in those paintings. The two hopped on their plane in Mexico without a hitch and arrived at Narita International Airport in Chiba, Japan. But at customs, they were stopped as the customs officers found 75 grams of marijuana hidden inside the two portraits, which was over $5,000 worth in weed on the Japanese market. Io and Nosawa were immediately arrested following this drug bust. They both said that they did not know the weed was in the portrait and that it was a gift from a fan in Mexico. But that didn't matter at all at that moment because they were facing 7 years each in prison for having the weed on them. Japan is not like other countries that have a very progressive and liberal view on marijuana. Weed is a no-go there and they take it very, very seriously. From childhood, Japanese people are taught to believe that weed is in the same class as hard drugs like coke or special H and can lead to dire life-altering consequences from doing it just even once. This attitude around weed creates a huge stigma around it in Japan and this is why so little Japanese people have experience with it. And when people are caught with it, it's effectively the end of the world. Celebrities who are caught with even just a little bit of weed are immediately arrested, cancelled and forced to apologize. Just take a look at this guy who was caught with 2 grams of weed and apologized by putting his head on the ground for 20 seconds. Cancel culture is much realer in Japan than in the West, as seen with the Japanese female singer who got cancelled just for having a boyfriend. She even shaved off her hair and went bald to apologize for it. So not only was Io facing major legal ramifications, she was also facing very severe and heavy social ramifications for getting busted with weed. After Io was arrested, she spent 22 days in a detention center. In one of her later interviews, she described this three week period as the worst time in her life. While she was in detention, she had no means of communication so she couldn't contact her family by calling them, she couldn't send any letters and she also didn't receive any news. On top of all of this, she was alone the whole time. The only person she could meet was her government given lawyer who kept on saying to her that if she would admit to smuggling the weed into Japan then she could get out on probation. Io further went on to say that during this 3 week period she barely ate and barely slept and cried a lot. It was truly hell for her. She even considered retiring from professional wrestling. But then, on the 22nd day of her incarceration, she was released. Japan's public prosecutor's office decided not to prosecute Nosawa and Io over this incident as they believed their story after doing their investigations. After Io was released, she held a press conference where she apologized to everyone over this incident. She also said that she was not going to retire from professional wrestling and she's going to work hard to regain the trust of her peers and the fans. She also revealed that her and Nosawa ended their relationship over this ordeal. About two weeks after Io's press conference, Mexico-based Japanese wrestler Taki Asugi, who was wrestling for AAA at the time, also held a press conference. And in this press conference, he revealed that he was the one who planted the weed on Io and her boyfriend. The crazy thing is that Taki Asugi is not the main villain in this story. He was just the pawn of another man, Masahiro Hayashi, a Japanese businessman who was in the top brass of AAA management and had a very shady history. Hayashi had a personal grudge with Io's boyfriend Nosawa at the time, so he promised Takuya Sugi a contract extension if he planted the weed in the paintings and he gave them to Io and Nosawa. Takuya Sugi went through with it as we can see but it ultimately backfired. Hayashi denied everything that Sugi had said and the case was just kinda dropped. This whole incident had a huge impact on Takuya Sugi as he was forced to retire from professional wrestling for more than 4 years. It also had a huge impact on Nosawa even though he was innocent as he was working for New Japan Pro Wrestling at the time but after this he was blackballed from the company and took a year off wrestling. This whole incident affected Io negatively as well as she was labeled as a criminal in Japan even though she was innocent. She was also suffering from mental health issues after she was released especially in the 2 months after the incident as she was trying to get back into pro wrestling. It also caused her relationship with her sister and her family to become even worse as the bad press was very damaging to their family's reputation. Io's family distanced themselves even further from her after the incident. It may sound strange but that's just how Japanese social culture works. It doesn't matter if someone committed a crime or not, even just an accusation is seen as a conviction, especially in drug cases. Over the years, Io eventually mended the relationship with her family, most notably her sister Mio, whom Io wrestled before she retired. All of this just made Io fall in love with wrestling even more and she was determined as ever to prove her worth. And funnily enough, this whole incident boosted Io's popularity in Japan and across the world. It's the thing of controversy creates cash. 
She was the victim who got caught in the crossfires and that caused there to be a swell of support for her. It also made her a badass that she got out of all of that mess alive. It's kind of what happened to one of her heroes, the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi, when he got stabbed in 2002 by an ex-girlfriend. And because of that incident, he became insanely popular in Japan and across the world. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that topic by the way. What also helped to boost Io's popularity were the various photo books that she released, where she was in various compromising positions with not much on. These photo books sold like crazy and really catapulted her into superstardom for something other than her wrestling skills. She also did various interesting things with her wrestling belt. But all of this is just too hot for YouTube, so let's move on. After the whole weed incident, she gained immense popularity in Japan for her in-ring abilities characterized by her high-flying and hard-hitting maneuvers that made her a standout performer in the Joshi wrestling scene. Fans were drawn to her acrobatic style and technical prowess, which often left audiences in awe. Additionally, Io's unique persona often portrayed her as a fearless and rebellious character. This resonated with fans and added an intriguing layer to her appeal. Her work ethic, dedication to the sport, and the numerous accolades she achieved all contributed to her iconic status in Japanese wrestling, making her one of the most beloved wrestlers that Joshi Wrestling has ever seen. In stardom, she was a Grand Slam champion as she won every belt that she could in the promotion. She won the promotion's top championship twice, with each reign lasting over a year. She was so good in fact that she won the Tokyo Sports Best Women's Wrestler of the Year for three years in a row from 2015 to 2017, and she is the only woman to do so. Io was on fire and because of this, WWE tried to sign her. She was offered a WWE deal in 2016 and was considering the offer. She then went for a trial match in early 2017 and WWE were impressed, but then they did scans on her and they found out she had some serious neck issues, so they pulled the contract off the table, as they were fearful of another prominent wrestler being forced into early retirement on their watch. Asuka at this time was a WWE, and a lot of wrestling fans were incorrectly speculating that Asuka was the one who politicked backstage to make sure that Io did not get signed to WWE due to their unresolved beef that was mentioned earlier in the video. A year later, WWE was still interested in Io and ultimately decided to take the risk on her as they signed her to a contract in 2018. As for the rest of her story, you already know it as Io Sky has become one of the mainstays in the WWE women's division, but that's the story of the time Io Sky smuggled marijuana into Japan. Thank you for watching the video, if you enjoyed this video please check out our other videos and also please like, share, comment and subscribe, but anyway, goodbye.